So let's take a look at how we can convert any base 10 fraction um, using IEEE 754. So the basic, um, the basics of this, I'll, I'll do a quick example here. Now, let's say we have this as a normalized scientific notation um, value uh, fraction. So what we're going to do is denormalize it. And by denormalizing it, um, I mean we're going to just simply show um, the whole number and the fractional component. Um, and then we're going to work with those two elements. So we're going to have to denormalize it, and we won't start with you know, these values here, but we're going to make sure we denormalize it. So now we have this denormalized expression. The next step here is to take our 23 and represent it using um, just basic binary, unsigned binary representation. So that 23 then is shown here. And if you double check this, the 1, 2, 4, 8, and 16, we see that that's a 16 plus a 7. And we get our 23. Now the other component of this is to take the fractional part and also represent that um, uh, as a binary value. So you'll see in an earlier video that we can represent a fractional value by a procedure that looked something like this, where you would take the 0 0.40625 and then you would double it and continue to double those fractional values but taking whatever these values were over here um, for the whole number and using that to build up um, your, 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 your base 2 value. And if you continue that process, so take a look at the other videos and you'll see that if you follow that process, you'll end up building up a base 2 value. And so this point 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, right? This is not a decimal point. It's a binary point. If you evaluate this, turns out that it's 1 quarter plus 1 eighth plus 1 thirty second. Check that out and you'll see that it's 0 0.40625. So now we take our 23 and we take our fractional part. And those two together, we're going to normalize. By normalize, I mean we're going to have our, um, our we're going to move this value one, two, three, four decimal places. So it'll be one point, and then the fractional part times two to the fourth. This is the value, right? This information here is going to be used to populate our 32-bit value. Now, since whatever number we have, right, no, what, no matter what that, that, uh, that binary value is, whether it's 11.00011 or whether it's 0, 0, 0, um, 1, 1, right, no matter what we do to normalize it, say that this is 1.1, or we do this one, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1. 1. 0, 1, all right, times 2 to the negative 1 here, oh, 2 to the positive 1. And then for this one, it would be times 2 to the 1, 2, 3, 2 to the negative 4. So 2 to the positive 1, 2 to the negative 4, but the point of this is that when it's in scientific notation, there will always be a 1 that sits out there um, for um, this component here. So our um, significant is what we're going to call it. We'll always have a one out front. We'll use that to help us, you know, box this information. If it's always going to be a one. Um, when we convert it to normalized scientific notation, then do we really need to kind of carry that into our packaging? So now that we have that, our next step then would be to bias um, our exponent because it's our, our values will be stored in biased notation.
There's an, a video that talks about biasing and how we represent positive and negative values. Certainly, we can have exponents that are positive or negative, but we will store it in using biased notation. Both positive and negative values are stored there. So if I take my 4 and add 127, I get 131. Um, 1, 2, uh, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128. So this is indeed 131. And we're going to take our 1 with our five zeros and two ones. And we're going to place that information into our exponent box. And so that will be seen here. And then we're going to take our fractional element here, right? Our 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1 will be placed in our um, 23 bits here. And then since we only needed these bits to represent our, our fractional component, um, that's all we would ultimately need. And to complete this, we would just fill this up so that we end up with 23 bits altogether, right? Bits 0 through 22. Give us 23 bits. So, and then since it's negative, our sign bit, our sign bit will be a 1 when the value that we're representing is negative, and our sign bit will be a 0 when the sign bit we're representing is positive. Now that is a, a quick summary of how we represent a value using, um, you know, place it or using the IEEE 754 standard, how we place that into this 32-bit package. A few things here for review. Scientific notation has these elements where there's the significant, and then, oops, let's go back. We have the significant, and we also have the radix. So in base 10, it would be 10. And had that been base 2, it would be a 2 to some exponent value. All right. So it all depends on which base we're looking at. But scientific notation will have a significant an exponent and a radix. So if we do look at, for example, base 2, um, instead of a decimal point, we do have a binary point here. We have a fractional part of that significant, and then we also have the radix and the exponent. When we encode this in scientific notation, we will bias this by adding 127, and then we will just encode the fractional part of the significant, um, and then we will also encode the sign. So those three elements, the sign, the fractional part, um, and then the exponent, those three, the sign, the exponent, and the fractional part will be put together as a stream of bits, in fact, 32 bits. And that will um, be our, how our doubles are represented. So if you declared a variable, variable is double x, it would be represented um, in 32 bits in this way. So, for example, if we do have a value such as 17 and 3 quarters, right? So, if we have 17 and 3 quarters, the first step will be to convert it into scientific notation. And so, right away, we'll get the fractional part. It's going to be placed in IEEE notation. But then we also have the exponent, which is going to be biased with the plus 127. So, I like to think about this if you want to bring it up into scientific or into IEEE. If you're bringing it up into IEEE notation, you're going to add 127. But you'll also have to remember that if you want to bring it out of IEEE into a base 10, you're going to have to subtract 127 from the exponent field of our 32-bit representation. Um, so when we're bringing it back down to base 10, we're going to have to subtract 127. But when we're encoding it and taking it up, we're going to add 127. For the fractional part, um, we will 
only have 0, 0, for example, 1, 1, 1. But when we're pulling it back down into base 10, we're going to have to remember that the 1, the implicit 1, wasn't encoded in this box. So when we we're going to have to manually place that in there. There's our 1, and then call it 1.0001111. And then if we're trying to pull out the exponent, um, this value that's encoded would have been encoded as 131 because of the biasing. So 127 plus the 4 is 131. So you're going to have to subtract 127 from that which will give us a 4, and then you'll know that you'll just um, use that exponent to complete your answer. Then you'll also have to look to see what the sign bit is. So we can, we can encode and decode with a, few, um, with a few steps, a few straightforward processes. So what would that look like? If you have a number, um, let's do another example. This one we've already done. Let's take a look at um, something like this. Let's say you're given a value that represents an IEEE, um, an IEEE value. Let's do this one here. So text 27BEFBFF is a 32-bit value. We have eight nibbles, each one of those is four bits. Then you're going to have to decode it and bring it down. So since it's a 32-bit IEEE value, we know that the first bit represents the sign. We have these other eight bits that represent the exponent. And then we have these other 23 bits, right, that represent the fractional component. And then if you um, go ahead and figure out what this value is, you'll see that as an unsigned value, it's 79. When we encoded it, it was biased with the 127. Since we're coming back down into base 10, then we're going to subtract 127. So that's telling us then that that's a negative 48. So when we take that negative 48, we're going to use it as a power of 2. Now for the fractional component, um, we're just simply going to put back in our implicit one and then use the 0, 1, 1, and then what do I see here? Three ones, 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 0, 1, 1, and so forth. So that value times 2 to the negative 48, that value times 2 to the negative 48 um, can be evaluated and to give us a base 10 expression. So the next example will include uh, a quiz or a problem that is a little bit simpler to do. Evaluating this mathematically would take a bit of time. Um, so we'll do a simpler one so that you can see how to do that conversion from base 2 into base 10. Now there are a couple of tools that will help you get some exposure to this. So if you look at Babbage, .cs.qccuny.edu, it will give you um, an example of what that value, what that base 10 value looks like when it's encoded in IEEE format. So take a look at that and play around with it and you'll be able to get some practice. And it will confirm that our representation is the correct representation. Also within Mars, um, there's a tool that will convert to 32-bit IEEE floating point format. So that will also give you some additional practice. So we'll do an example shortly, but the summary is take a denormalized base 10 value and convert it to base two. Convert that base two to a normalized value. So it'll be something like 1.00111 times two to the fifth, right? That would be the normalized value. Once you've converted to base 10, you'll normalize it. So maybe it's something like this, times 2 to the 5th. 
then since we're putting it into IEEE, um, you're going to have to encode this with a plus 127. We're pulling it up into IEEE, so at 127, that 127 plus the 5 is the 132, and that 132 is the value that will be stored in that particular box of the IEEE format. And then the fractional part will be the 011, and then we're going to have to fill that out until we end up filling up all 23 bits since that's all that we would need, for example, for this representation. The rest would just be zeros.